Let's look at a few of these um, traveling waves. Let's look at a traveling sinusoid. Uh, let's see. Well, that means we can have x and y and watch it in time. And if I'm going to describe it as a sine, you know, it's going to look like this, kind of like that. And we can write y of x and t equals a sine. And keep in mind that inside of a sine, in the real world of physics, things have to be unitless. Okay, in math, you can have sine of x. In physics, if x is position, you can't have sine of x. You have to have a unitless thing that gives you phase. So we would write it as k. Remember, that's the spatial, uh, that's the wave number, um, x minus vt. And that keeps everything fine. This is in meters, this is inverse meters, so that's unitless, that's a phase. And this is phase per meter, and velocity times time is meter, so it turns into phase. So everything works out. If you were to watch this in time, you would find that it moves um, in the positive x direction at v. So when you have x minus vt, it moves in positive x. And sometimes that bothers people. You can think about it um, and see it pretty clearly if you just think about where is the sine 0. Okay? So sine, it, it, we were thinking of 0 as a specific phase point in the sine curve. Okay? So let's think of the 0 where it crosses and goes up. Basically, the 0 of sine of x. So we could say here, this is going to be 0 when x is 0 at the origin and time equals 0. All right? And then it's sitting right there. Okay, now, what if we let time creep forward a little bit? If time creeps forward, this part becomes a little bit negative. But if we want to keep up where that zero is, this part will have to become a little bit positive to cancel it out. Right? We're keeping up with the sine zero, the sine of zero. So because that negative is there, that grows, this has to grow positive. So that means that zero will occur a little bit over here at a positive x. So the minus vt makes the curve go in positive x. You could also write sine of k times x plus vt. It would go the other way. Okay, so x minus vt goes positive x, x plus vt goes negative x. For sinusoids, it's also written like this. Usually written like this, y of x and t, and you basically just distribute the k equals a sine and then kx it's a terrible k kx minus and then kv is omega right this is the phase per unit meter times the velocity it's a phase per unit time the angular velocity so that's the normal way to write a traveling wave a sinusoidal traveling wave other waves can travel You can have a traveling Gaussian pulse. Right, so if you have your Gaussian that you know and love and think about here at the origin, something like that, it's not very good, um, and you've plotted it y versus x, and you want to make it travel, you can say y of x and t is a e to the minus x minus v t squared. And you could add more constants if you want, but we don't need to. That's enough. So a being the height. And then notice it's not x squared minus vt squared. It has to be in the form x minus vt always. So it's quantity x minus vt squared. Okay? And again, in this case, if you want to figure out how it's going to move, think of the maximum position at 0. If vt grows, if you move forward in time, to make this remain 0 where the maximum and keep up where the maximum is, x has to grow. Right? So that's going to move that way at v. Um, let's see. So this moves. plus x direction at v. And really, it's any shape. So if we had some dramatic shark music playing right now, which we probably don't want to pay for the copyright for, maybe you have like a shark fin function. If you had written the function f shark as a function of x, to describe this shark fin creeping along the x-axis. If you just write it minus vt, you can have the shark fin moving along. Any function you write, f of x minus vt. 
So now we can think, does this really happen? Do these nice little uh, functions we describe move perfectly along a string? Because you know they don't really do that, right? So let's think about just some real pulses going on strings, what it looks like. It seems like they kind of keep their shape, but they do fall apart a little bit. Well, there could be a lot of reasons for that. One could be damping. We've put no damping mechanism in our wave equation. So clearly that, that could be one. Another could be nonlinearity. So when we drive the wave equation for a string, we assumed everything was small angles and small deviations from zero. And of course, we're not doing that when we pulse our string. So there could be nonlinear effects in our string. But there's a third very interesting one, and it's related to combining the descriptions of traveling waves and normal modes. So the third one we're going to get to very soon.